Excuse me, Father. I wonder if I could uh, talk to you for a couple minutes. Oh, yeah, sure, Joe. Sit down. Thanks. And it's uh, Reverend, my father. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I uh, never seem to know which is which. I mean, it all looks the same with the collar and all. Uh, well, it's an ordinary mistake. Oh, but I'm uh, quite used to it. Oh, I know the difference, though. So, the priest is the one who can't go with the girls, and the reverend is the one who can. Crudely stated, but uh, that's one aspect of it, yeah. Hmm. Thank you. Uh, would you like some more coffee? No, thanks. I'm up to here with coffee, among other things. And besides, I know that people in the church don't get too much bread. I wouldn't want you to take on any additional expenses. Oh, I'm sure I could scrape up some coffee money. I'll deny myself something else. And, uh, what uh, did you want to talk about? We have something in common. Oh, good. We're off to a great start. What is, what is this common ground? Your new secretary, Jill. Oh, yeah. I don't know why I use the word secretary, because as long as I've known her, she's never been able to find which end of the typewriter the paper goes in. Well, apparently she's found out, because the, the work that's coming out of it is excellent. Mm, what specifically did you want to uh, talk about? Well, I just want you to know that I appreciate what you're doing for her. I mean, I saw you come out of the boarding house over there, and you must be treating her real good. It's not everybody would give a girl like that a job. And I wouldn't want you to get in trouble with your congregation or parish, or whatever you call your flock. And what must your wife think? You bring your Miss Unwed Mother of the Year into the house. What my wife or the members of my church feel about it has nothing to do with my decision to hire her. Oh, I'm sure of that. With Jill's looks and build, anyone half dead could tell why you hired her. Come on, Rev, we're talking man to man. I mean, you can talk man to man, can't you? Oh, yeah. Jill's my girl and Kelly's my kid. They're mine, they'll always be mine, no matter what she says. When I own a piece of property, I make sure there's no trespassers. No trespassers, you got that, Rev? So no matter what you and my brother are cooking up, you're not gonna keep me away from her. You understand? I understand you very well, Joe. Anything else you want to talk about? Oh, just a few odds and ends. Good. Well, why don't you uh, walk along with me, huh? Why not? Thank you, Laurie. Well, I guess I'll just walk along with you. I mean, just to make sure you don't do anything sinful. Don't you ever let me hear that filth again. That girl is trying to lift herself up out of the gutter, your gutter. She's trying to make a new life for herself and her baby. You hear me loud and clear. If you so much as interfere with her once, I'll either let the police know or I'll take you apart myself. You understand? Stay clear. So you really dig her? Just fishing for another piece. <laughs> mm, please, have all you like. If I had the room. Dad, you'd be doing me a favor. Have you ever tried to eat devil's food cake with marshmallow frosting for breakfast? A few years ago, you'd have jumped at the chance. You're a very lucky man, Norman. I hope you know it. Most wives these days not only don't bake, they do very little of anything else. Except maybe keep the dust off the family checkbook. Rita's one in a million. Uh, I'll, I'll second that. Well, it's easy for you guys to talk. You don't have to live with her. For instance, who do you think's gonna clear the table? No, I'm all to it. Don't, don't. Put on a show for Dad. You've already impressed him. Was he always like this? A lot worse. He used to mean it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got sent from the table so many times for making wisecracks, I was lucky I got through the salad, let alone dessert. <laughs> you know, marriage has been very good for Norman. It's given him a lot more confidence. I heard that. Hey, Norm, what about your father's champagne? Yeah, what about it, Dad? I'll take care of it. Well, tomorrow's the big day. A beginning, not an end. Not like last time. Why shouldn't it be? You love each other. Oh, that we do, Sparrow. Oh, but I just hope I can make her happy. You'll bring the glasses, Norman. Okie doke. Mm, looks good. Souvenir. Thank you. Now, may I propose a toast? Of course. <clears throat> to no one's surprise, and with every confidence that I'm accurately predicting the future, 
to Rod and Betty. A lifetime of success and happiness together. Thank you. You here. Remember what we drank on our honeymoon? Soda pop. Chateau Black Cherry. Don't mind us. It makes what I'm about to say a lot easier. I'd like to propose another toast to my future this time. I'm going to be leaving you uh, right after the wedding. But why? Why? How come? Very simple. I had a visit from one of your grandfather's attorneys, Bill Kennerly's son. The mill's been sold. Right from under me. My services are no longer needed. Uh, well, couldn't you stay on as, gen as general manager or something? Who's the new owner? I don't know, Rod. I wasn't informed. Well, that doesn't mean you have to leave, does it? Well, I'm afraid it does, Rita. Why? Mr. Payton doesn't own this town, or you. Well, I have to earn a living. Besides, I think it's time for me to go. My two sons are grown and married. They can stand on their own two feet. Something they've always wanted to do, and perhaps they always could. If I'd only taken the time to know you better, if I'd had more faith in your abilities and less in my own. Well, suppose we drink up. There are a few things I have to do. Thank you, Rita, for a wonderful evening. I'll always remember it. You're very welcome, Mr. Harrington. Mm -hmm. Dad? Dad? Would you like Rod and me to walk you over? Well, I, I'd like that very much. Harrington take it? I don't know. Well, you were standing right in front of him. Well, he was angry, I guess. But he guards his feelings. Like the rest of us. I'll never understand why Peyton didn't fire him months ago. When it was obvious that Harrington was thinking about helping the old man into the cemetery. I wouldn't know anything about that. Do you ever run into Robinson? No. It's a rare day when I see any of our old classmates. You're not very good at changing the subject. I've told you everything. Everything possible. You asked me to drive out to the airport with you in order to get a rundown on the... A rundown on all the legal matters pertaining to the sale of the Peyton Mill. I've given you that rundown. And that's it? That's it. Driver, pull over there, will you? You've got an appointment. What are you talking about? You'll see. There's someone wants to see you. from the continuing story of Peyton Place. I like your style, Mr. Court. I really do. And I thought I was mad. Maybe you are. Maybe we both are. If everybody is telling everything the way it is, why is it all such a strain? Why the rush to get me out of town? Don't try to stop the wedding. Don't try to do any of the things that you want to do to undermine their marriage.